Hey, it's Paddy Hirsch, Senior Editor at Marketplace, here to explain to you why commercial real estate is such a big deal. A lot of people have asked us, why is commercial real estate causing so much of a big problem? Well, let me show you. And the biggest, one of the, one of the manifestations of the problems in the commercial real estate market is in regional banks. In fact, there's one just very uh, close to us here in the same courtyard in this building, Cal National, which was recently overtaken by the FDIC and sold to US Bank. And the reason is, in many cases, for these problems with these banks, and particularly in the case of Cal National, is that they have been poisoned by commercial real estate. They've got huge commercial real estate assets that are weighing them down and making them fail. So how did that all work out? Well, what happened was during the boom, developers, people who build shopping malls and office towers and all the rest of it and hotels, went to the banks and they said, look, this boom is going to last forever. People are going to need all this office space and they're going to need malls to shop in and all the rest of it. Give us a load of money and we'll build lots of buildings to put office workers and stores and all the rest of it in. So the bank said, okay, and gave them a huge bag of money. There you go. And uh, gave it to the developers. And the developers went out and they started building. And they built and they built and they built. They built big office towers all over the country. Okay, big old office towers. They built shopping malls, you know, with uh, all sorts of stores in them. They built hotels, okay, and spas and all sorts of fancy things in Las Vegas and all the rest of it all over the country. And um, what happened, of course, was that the financial crisis hit and everything went bad, okay? People stopped hiring. People stopped spending. People stopped going on vacation, which meant that uh, people who had office towers, they couldn't get enough, you know, uh, as, as companies started to lay workers off, it meant that all that real estate uh, in the office towers went empty. The malls started to empty out. The shops inside the malls started to go bust because nobody was shopping there. The hotels as well, nobody was going there. So they just, none of these uh, developers, once they'd built these buildings, even though they'd built them, where they weren't able to, to fill them with tenants. And as a result, they couldn't get any money in to pay their interest back to the banks. So it meant that the banks, expecting interest back on these enormous loans, and some of them were extremely big, found themselves getting no interest at all. And in many cases, a lot of these buildings weren't even built. They were in development with very little hope of being filled in the, in the near future. So this put the banks in a real bind because what they'd done is they'd loaded up their balance sheets. Here's the balance sheet. They'd loaded up the balance sheet with these loans, which are assets, okay? But because there was no cash coming in from them, it meant there was nothing on the other side to balance the assets out or these assets out. So what it meant is that these loans, all of very few of which were paying out or many of which weren't, weren't paying out at all, started to weigh down the balance sheet. So what happened? Well, we know that the Federal Reserve stepped in uh, and the Treasury stepped in and the government stepped in with a whole bunch of money, okay, which went out in the bailout to these banks. So this money was put on the, uh, the balance sheet to try and balance things out. But in many cases, because some of these commercial real estate uh, loans are in such bad shape, this balance sheet is, is still way out of whack. And as time has gone on, more and more of these banks have been, in such a, have been so badly crushed by this problem uh, that they have failed. The FDIC has taken them over and it's led to a real crisis in the, in, the, in the banking industry. And we're seeing it every weekend. The FDIC is coming in on a Friday night, taking over banks, and, uh, and then selling them off to, uh, to the highest bidder. It's a real problem right now because uh, a lot of people are saying that this is the next wave because more and more of these developers are sitting, waiting for their loans to, uh, to improve, hoping that their, 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 uh, their developments will improve as the economy picks up. And in many cases, the banks are saying, well, maybe we'll take a gamble here. Maybe we'll extend your loan for a few more years in the hope that as the economy picks up, more people will start to occupy your space and uh, we'll start to see the money flowing again. Now, that means that uh, these assets are sitting here teetering, still teetering on this balance sheet. These, uh, these banks are crossing their fingers, hoping that everything is going to work out. But if it doesn't, if the economy doesn't improve, if tenants don't start to come back into these buildings and the interest rates or the, uh, the interest money doesn't start to flow back to the bank, it's going to leave everybody, the developers, the banks, and indeed everybody, the Treasury and the Fed, very badly needing a drink.